Hello everyone, my name is Jake Jonas and I am the host of the Take Two podcast, which is another film and filmmaking podcast. But this time it's different because I'm hosting it and that already means it's going to be better. So hopefully you enjoy the podcast. If you're watching the podcast on YouTube, we're also live on Spotify at the Take Two podcast. As well as this, if you're listening to it, the audio version on Spotify, we are live on YouTube for the visual episode as well. I hope you enjoy this week's episode. I'll see you in there. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Take Two podcast. This week, I'm joined with a very special guest, which is Steve North, who is an actor, director and writer and has been in the industry for many years. Thank you very much, so, Jake. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, Steve, yeah, do you want to say a little bit about yourself, some of the work that you've done? And fellow Brighton and Hove Albion fan. Okay. Yes, yeah, no, well, yeah, I, I do like Brighton Hove. I also support Man City as well. Yeah, I do like Brighton as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, um, would you want to know? I mean, sort of, I suppose, uh, in terms of um, what you're, you're, you're doing, uh, do you want to know more about the acting career or, or the filmmaking? Yeah, both, or... well, I'll... I'll I mean, yeah, I mean, I was going to start, obviously, you know, I, I did a bit of a, a, a bit of background research on you. I saw that, um, obviously, you, you came, you went to drama school and then your first uh, professional career, or that your first professional job was playing Colin Parrish on London's Burning. And I was just going to ask, like, how is the jump from, obviously, drama school doing your acting course to then going on to work on a TV show? And, uh, yeah, like, kind of how, how was it in terms of being in, like, a professional setting and being a professional crew yeah it was uh it was it was pretty kind of strange i mean the whole thing really because i, I wasn't um it wasn't kind of part of the plan as it were I I, i'm not sure i really had a plan but i went to gsa guildford school of acting as it was known then um mm. and i did the acting course and uh we did a showcase for our sort of final year in the west end um where we did a load of scenes you know like due two-handers and stuff and, and they kind of invite agents and casting directors to that and uh so i did that and um i played uh this character from a play called once a catholic which is by mary o'malley and he was kind of a teddy boy bit of a sort of very not dissimilar i suppose to colin who, who ended up playing um and uh you know you do this kind of um thing where after the showcase you will stand around in the bar in this theatre and these and whoever's like interested you know like agents whatever they go up to people and kind of give them their card and then go so we're all doing that you know standing around and a few people were getting like this kind of stuff and literally no one came to me like not one person so i was kind of like there's like a few of us that stood there you know i was that guy one of those guys and um, so it was a bit like oh right okay you know you feel a bit like and then obviously when you're going back on the coach after there's some people who've like got five different cards and stuff um so it was kind of a little bit like okay never mind uh, onwards and upwards um and then uh, uh from there I, I, the guy i was in on the course with we it was the, it used to be then that you had to get an equity card to work you, you know to, you had to be a member of the union to, to actually work as an actor you don't that, that, that's long gone now but um that was the, that was always like your first thing when you started acting you had to get your equity card so um i ended up doing a, a, a theater and education tour with this this sort of company that my friend had set up which was to get us equity cards um and we got our equity cards pretty early on so that was really good so i I was kind of up and running with that um and then i had about a a year out from college and i was doing like fringe stuff you know and kind of writing off uh, kind of jobs and then i went to edinburgh festival to do this play uh in the following sort of august that's like a year after i'd left and um this this is the days before mobile phones so it shows how long ago it was um i got a message to call this casting director but i had to go to a phone box and do it you know i couldn't i didn't have a mobile um and uh, and i literally thought you know, this is like a wind up one of my mates do you know what i mean i'm going to ring this number and it's going to be some like joke line or it's going to be kind of one of my mates like yeah so so i was kind of like ringing you know and i was kind of half going yeah hi steve north sort of doing that thing like i better take it just in case it isn't i better kind of 
you know, not not go down the road of just saying this is a wine up. But at the same time, I was being very careful. You know, I was kind of thinking if it is a wine up, I don't want to be kind of walk into this. So like a complete idiot, yeah, of course. <laughs> so I was just playing it very cool. You know, just go, well, maybe that helps actually. So and and um, and then uh, they said, yeah, it's casting director. We're interested uh, in you for a role in London's Burning. And, um, you know, would you be able to come in? I said, well, I'm in Edinburgh, you know, I can't, obviously it's in London. They said, well, just get in touch when you get back in September and come and meet us. And I, I was kind of like, okay. And then I thought, wow, you know, that's pretty cool. I, I, I couldn't, couldn't, didn't quite believe it. But even then I just thought, oh, well, it's going to be some like guest part. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's good. But I, yeah, I, yeah, I had no idea what it was. I just thought I was going to be like a, in one episode or something like that. Um, yeah because they didn't say then what it was for and then i and then i came back and then i went in for the interview and when i went in you know i met the casting director and um i yeah quickly realized at that point wow this is like uh a, a, you know a guest a, a, a sort of returning role and yeah. um and then yeah it was probably i mean i always say this it's like the easiest audition i ever did you know out of any audition oh, really? i've ever done i would say that was the easiest one it was like I thought from then onwards, oh, it's always going to be like this. Because I literally went in, met them. They said, yeah, great, come back and meet the producer and we're going to send you some scripts. And I was like, okay. I mean, of course, this is days before email as well. So they post you like this, the hard copies of the scripts. Mm. So this big package turns up, you know. Um, yeah. And then I was like, wow, you know, it's like really good part. And then I came in and, I, and, and you know, that time I, I was so green, I, I didn't sort of prepare that much. I literally just read through the scripts and went, okay. And then I turned up and um, the producer was there and they said, right, just read through the scenes. And I literally like read through them, literally reading them, you know, I wasn't like, <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't filmed or anything. It was just literally me and the oh, wow. producer. Yeah. And then um, they, I went through it once, didn't get any notes, and they went, okay, thanks very much, it's great. And I went, okay, great. And I went downstairs, and I, I remember it was in the LWT building, and um, they rang down, and I missed them in the foyer to tell me that they wanted me to do it. And then when I got home um, to where I was living, my then girlfriend at the time was like, you got the role, you know? So I, it, was, it was, that was what I mean. It was like from, from literally not expecting it to, basically just going and meeting reading for it and then getting off of it i got it you know um so it was yeah it was so unexpected i didn't really have time to think about it and then um and then yeah it was it, you know as i say i thought oh god this is great you know i, thought, I kind of felt like that it's never been that easy since i know <laughs> i've ever done has been as easy as that one um i don't know if it was because i was just so green i didn't know what was going on but i just sort of walked my, I walked my way through it i had no kind of expectations um, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I hadn't sort of thought about getting a part like that. So, so I was focusing much more on theatre at the time. So oh, okay. it was kind of like only, only because that's that was what I thought you know was where I was going to work because I didn't have any film credits or anything. You know. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and then yeah, you know, the rest is history. Really, I kind of got it, and then I was like, wow, you know. And then I, I, I went straight into it, and then that was pretty full on because I'd never done really any screen acting training at drama school, so I was really learning that. Uh, probably in the first series, it, it was really about learning kind of how to work on camera as an actor. Yeah. So, so what was like kind of the set of uh, London's Burning? Like, what was it like? You know, first time being on camera with the, um, uh, yeah, first time being on camera with your acting career. What was it kind of like? Like, like how was it? How many crew was yeah, there? Yeah, it was uh, pretty, pretty. Yeah, it was very intense. I mean, it was, um, it was like life imitating art really because the character I was playing, he was kind of a new recruit coming on his first day to the fire station. And obviously I was a new actor coming to his first day to the film set. So in a way I was kind of acting his, his journey just in a different set of circumstances. So in a way the acting side, I suppose wasn't partly, I, I didn't have to worry too much because I was, I was pretty nervous and I was kind of a bit like, what the hell's going on? So, but that's what he would have been like so it kind of helped you know if I'd been playing a character who was obviously coming in very confident and having to kind of order everyone around it would have been very difficult because inwardly yeah. I would have been basically I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on here but you know oh you um, can yeah it's fine <laughs> back myself. Um, yeah. but yeah but yeah it was kind of helpful because I I, I I you know I wasn't having to act too much I was just sort of in that zone um so that helps but yeah i was pretty nervous because obviously you walk on a set like that and it's a load of people um 
not only that, you know, it's it's been up and running for quite a long time. So they'd already done this was like the third series. So they've done a film, TV film, and a two series. So so there was also that kind of thing of like everyone knew each other as well. It wasn't like a new, you know, if you all start at the same time. You're all kind of new people at the same time, but yeah, but you're, you know, it's, but I was I was sort of walking in, not really knowing anyone, where, where everyone else knows each other really well, um, okay. and that can be kind of a bit, you know, that can be quite intimidating as well, you know, because yeah. you feel like you're. But um, but yeah, it was fine. It was it was good. I mean, I had a really good kind of. They were all really helpful, and I think they kind of understood what was happening. So they kind of just um, looked after me really. I mean, I was pretty young. I was only like 24. Um, mm. I know most of the people on it were quite a lot older, so I was kind of like, yeah, I was kind of, you know, it was that sort of thing being slightly like the new boy. And yeah, yeah, of course. Well, then obviously you've then gone on to like work in loads of other big uh, shows in the UK, such as EastEnders, Holby City, Midsummer Murders, and also Doctor Who. So then did you take like obviously your experience from uh, London's Burning and then apply it to all the other like shows that you've worked on as well? Like, How was it? Was it the same kind of terms of crew size was it bigger because obviously these shows have been going on for years like such as eastenders like how is it like trying to like fit yourself into shows such as eastenders and holby city etc yeah good question i mean they're all sort of shot differently so it's always different like i mean east end and this is very it's shot like multi-cam so what they call yeah. multi-cam so it's multi-camera so you essentially shot with uh on a studio set with four or five cameras that are all shooting at once. Um, and so they, they, it's almost like doing, that's more like doing live work, you know, because you, you're essentially, there's a camera on each character and they're kind of editing it as they as they make it. Yeah, so essentially it's a little bit more, um, It's you know, you work in a very different way with something like that because um, it's very fast and uh, you've got to be very sort of on the lines and all that, you know, you, you, there's not much room for, for kind of mistakes um you don't get hardly any rehearsal so you literally go on set and you you know they, they'll start shooting you pretty much straight away um and then you've got to you know you just got to be really on it and you've got to kind of it's a bit like getting on a sort of slow moving boat or something you know it's never going to stop you just sort of get on and off and um you don't want you don't want to sort of get yeah. get left behind you know there's this kind of thing whereas you know other things are shot sort of slower than that and you get more time you know to kind of work on it um and and sort of work on the scenes and stuff but that's why you know when you look at things like eastenders you know people sometimes not the acting in it but um the reason that it can be a bit sort of you know obvious or whatever is just because of that because the actors are working so quickly they just haven't got time to rehearse so they have to really like kind of hit the ground running and um yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, again, why they pretty much typecast soaps, you know, they'll tend to kind of cast people they think are really like the character because they know they haven't got time to kind of work on a character for a very long, that kind of thing. So is it like almost you kind of, uh, your agent or um, whoever at the time gets you the role, uh, how long is it until you find out you've got this job and then you're like, okay, is it like a week or like a month until you know that you're yeah, going on I mean, the set? Obviously you get the role, they, they get you the casting um but you know that's only half of it i mean once you get the casting you know you're, you're going to then go in to the audition up against probably 20 30 other people yeah. so so you've got to so i mean you know if you think like every probably submission that goes out for a role on spotlight probably gets i don't know it depends on how many they, agents they send it to but if they're going to send it out to a lot of agents it's going to get probably three or four hundred suggestions and then the casting director yeah. will then whittle down those suggestions to probably 20 or 30 people and then from there you know they'll, they'll maybe even less than that and then they'll audition those people i mean now they probably do self-tapes and then from the self-tapes yeah. they would then recall thing i mean it's one of the good things about self-tapes i think it means that it spreads the net a bit wider it means you get probably more people going up for a role on the self-tape and then they'll call in the ones they think you know are the kind of shortlisted candidates they'll get in yeah um but yeah, you tend to go in and, and do the, the, the casting and then, you know, you can wait. It just varies. I mean, it can be very quick, depending on how soon they're doing it. And other times, you know, you can wait like a month and stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's you, you know, it's, there's no real kind of, um, uh, you can't say it's the same for any job, really. It's just depending on, with something like EastEnders, it's normally about two weeks ahead. 
two or three weeks ahead of when they're shooting it. They, they do yeah. that. But with other things, you know, it can be literally two or three days and certainly commercials, you know, they do that. And then um, other things like films and stuff, they might, they might spend much longer casting, you know, the, the roles and that, that can take yeah. a lot longer. What about like, because obviously you're on Doctor Who, like what was it like kind of um, working on that? Because obviously that's, uh, I'd imagine that's obviously not like a sitcom like EastEnders. Is that like a lot more slower pace you get time to work on your characters or is it still quite a quick turnaround? It's still still pretty quick, actually. Um, with, with Doctor Who is quite an interesting one because I, I turned up for that and um, uh, they had I had a bit of a sort of actor's nightmare, which is where they'd rewritten the script for the scene I was in, but I hadn't been oh, sent no. the changes. So when I got to the set, uh, or so when I turned up to basically sort of, um, I, I had to drop my bag. It was a night shoot the first day I did on that. And... Um, mm. I had to drop my bags off at the hotel and then they were going to take me to the set to kind of get to, to shoot, you know, to get ready and shoot, shoot the scene. And um, when I got to the hotel to check in, you know, just to drop my bags off, they gave me this like envelope. Uh, and I was thinking like, oh no, this is going to be rewrites. And you open it up and there's a whole like those sort of script stuff in there. And you, you realize like, oh my God, please don't let this be my scene. And you're kind of looking down, I don't know if you've ever seen a rewritten script, but they, they put asterisks on the script next to where the rewrites oh, really? are. Oh. So that's how you know that if your lines have been rewritten because you'll see asterisks uh, down the side of the script. And I looked straight away from my scene and there, there were all these asterisks. And I was like, oh, no, you know. Because um, I had to do it that night and I'd just learnt, you know, I'd learnt it. Like that. Um, so I had to kind of then think, Price, I've got to relearn it in like probably an hour, you know. Um, so I, I got kind of, again, I got quite nervous then because obviously it was quite a big scene and um, I had to, I mean, if you've seen my show reel, it's actually on my show reel, it's the scene with Matt Smith. And I had to yeah. get, so we, we, we got on set and then what happened was there's this massive set and it got like probably 50 extras and Matt Smith's got this like basically six page scene of which my bit with him is at the end of it and uh they shoot they shoot like the whole thing in one go with a steady cam you know like the camera that's on a rig so it, that kind of follows him around so he's going around all these different bits doing his thing and the steady cam's kind of following him so they're, they're not cutting you know they're not because that would have been a yeah, bit easier like if they'd what? done it in like sections um and yeah. i'm standing there waiting right at the end of this sort of shot thinking you know he's just done this whole like take and he's like like, he's like line perfect you know i mean he's got a whole load of lines and then you know mr like he comes to me and i'm going like oh, what's the line you know it's like, I really didn't want to, like, really kind of like so i was kind of really worried about it and i started thinking because i had to kind of like relearn it and that's really hard because it's not like learning new lines you're kind of having to sort of relearn lines you know that are quite similar and um when we did the rehearsal, I just sort of said to him, Matt Smith, I was like, look, Matt, I, I didn't get the changes because, uh, you know, it's really, we've got the script changes. Um, and he was great. He was such a, so, he was so good. He just went, OK, don't, he, he, you know, he's really like affable anyway. And he just went, all right, yeah. man. He said, look, don't worry about it. He said, I'll tell you what, we'll rehearse it. He said, you just, you know, don't worry about getting the light. He said, that's fine. You just say whatever lines in the rehearsal. And he said, once they're happy with it, we'll go off, me and you. And he said, and I'll just run it with you till you're happy. And I was like, wow. okay, great. So we just did that. And then I just went off with it. And, you know, we sat in like his trailer and he, he just like ran it like about 10 times. And then he was like, okay, you good? You good? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's much, you know, I felt happy. So kind of by the time he came to shoot it, although it was still quite nerve wracking, I wasn't quite as worried because I kind of felt like, a, he he kind of under, he, he sort of knew what had happened so I knew that he wouldn't be pissed off with me if I did forget a line yeah, do you know what I mean because like, he, he he was yeah. aware because when I told him he was like oh no man that's a nightmare it's like the worst thing isn't it for an actor you know so he was being really good about it and then um, and then uh, as it happened I think we did about eight different shots of it and I think I only blew the lines on one of them so it was pretty oh, good wow. I was kind of yeah. right yeah yeah, oh, the rest thing though was kind of wait. You know, you know, I had to kind of wait for him to come, and I could see him doing all his stuff like this. And that was the worst thing of all because I was thinking like it was that kind of horrible feeling of going like, please don't fuck it up, please don't. You know, <laughs> here he comes. And I could see him coming towards me, and I was like, here we go. Hearts like going like this. Yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. I, I'd be breaking it if I. But fair play, yeah, yeah. For, for having to do such quick learning. But actually, I put it on my reel because yeah, yeah, no, I kind of yeah. 
It's quite, yeah, no, it's I quite cool. like my performance on it because because I think because I was a bit nervous. I was quite sort of kind of manic and a bit sort of like this and it comes over yeah. quite well as the character actually. I remember the yeah. director came up after and because I did say to him at the start as well, I went, you know, I've only just got the line change. I should have gone early because I was a bit worried he was going to be sort of annoyed with it. Yeah. And he was a bit like, you know, you know, he didn't really want to know. And that's the thing with directors, you know, because he was obviously hoping he doesn't want to hear anything that's going to kind of be a problem. So he just went, yeah, but you'll be fine. Man. You'll be fine. You'll be all right. Isn't it? And I was going, okay, yeah, you obviously don't, you know, you don't want to go there, which is fair enough. Um, but kind of afterwards, he came up to me and went, oh, no. I was like, was that okay? And he just went, yeah, it was great. I really liked it. He said it had a really nice sort of energy. So, you know, it's fine. Yeah, well, t- I mean, talking about directors, you've also uh, done some directing as well. Uh, you uh, directed uh, a short film called Cregan, which uh, is on Vimeo. Um, I'll put the links in the bio. It's, I've just watched it as well. It's very good. I definitely recommend going to watch it. Uh, Steve, you want to talk about what uh, yeah. Cregan, the short film's about? So firstly, major, probably say a major trigger warning because it's pretty violent. Um, so if you have yeah. any sort of yeah. issues with uh, seeing violence on screen, I would, um, I would, uh, and there's kind of a so intimations, a bit of child abuse in it as well. So you've got to be a bit careful with like that stuff in it. Um, but yeah, it was, um, it was, it's a very sort of, it's what I call kind of social realist film. It's very sort of, uh, um, you know, made in the vein of, you know, sort of Ken Loach or whatever. That's the kind of feel of it. Shane Meadows, big influence, and a film called Nil by Mouth, which I don't know if you know, is big influence on that film, which is directed by Gary Oldman. Um, which is a really good film. It's the only film he's ever directed, and he he came back to England to do it. And um, he 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 basically made a film about his alcoholic father, and he, and he kind of oh. Ray Winston's in it. And uh, it's, I mean, again, you know, it's got a lot of really heavy violence in it um, and domestic abuse. But um, but yeah, it's a brilliant film. I mean, really well made. And so Gary Oldman made that with Ray Winston and Kathy Burke, and they're they're both fantastic in it. And when I was, um, I just started teaching kind of screen acting in Brighton, first, first sort of time I did it in about 2005. And uh, I worked with this guy who, who was a sort of, he just got into acting and he was a, a from Northern Ireland. And um, he basically told me about this kind of thing that had happened to him where he grew up as a kid and he wanted to make it into a short film. So we worked, uh, me and another kind of writer worked on it as a script with him. And then we got funding to make it. So it's kind of based on him. And he's actually in the film, he's very, he has quite a small part, but he's, he's the guy who's driving the pickup, sort of uh, oh. the four by four. Um, and, uh, and then we shot it um, uh, in Brighton, actually, over about three days. And then we went to Northern Ireland just to get the exteriors where the kids sort of at the end goes in front of the mural and stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, and it was that, that was a really good film to shoot. I mean, in terms of the actors and stuff, it, it was a, we did a lot of like improvisation. Yeah. So um, a lot yeah, of kind of what they're doing in the film is improvised, but improvised very much around the structure. It wasn't like they were just doing their own thing. Yeah, of course, you could definitely feel that, in, especially the scene with um, the four actors inside the living room. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you could definitely feel like there was like a sense of Im- improv into that scene. But yeah, I was going to ask, like, obviously, with your like directing process, like, like about how do you go? Because obviously, yeah, it is got a lot of like hard hitting uh, stuff apart with the film. So like, how do you kind of like, you, you know, you take the script, you work on it. How do you then try and apply that to then? Yeah, like the short film. Do you is it? Stages. Okay, yeah, well, the thing with, yeah, the thing with that film was um, that scene you're talking about, which is probably the main scene in the film, on the yeah. page, I think it wasn't that many lines. It was only like probably five lines. Um, and, you know, but I sort of knew directing it, it was going to have to be longer than that because um, it was such a key kind of scene. So what we did was is when, when we cast it, um, when I was going to shoot it i got the actors to come down i mean it's a short film so it's always a bit difficult because obviously you know you can't pay people the kind of rates for rehearsal and stuff that you would normally do if it was a proper film so you can't ask too much of actors really because um you know they're, they're, they're sort of giving up their time and i mean i've been on the other side of that so i know kind of what that's like so um we had a very short amount of time so i got the actors to sort of come down uh, the night before we were shooting and we all had a, a sort of rehearsal uh, early evening. But for the rehearsal, all I did was, really, was I just went, look, you know, 
obviously we, there's no point rehearsing the scene we're going to block that out on the day and also i want to get it kind of on camera but what would be really good is just to sort of talk about the characters and the backstories and i also got the guy there who you know who it had happened to so he could be there to kind of talk about anything related to the subject that they might want to ask and then we just talked about each of the characters and what had happened and what, what was sort of le what had led up to them to bringing this guy back to this kid's house to this to, to this kid's brother's house and um you know what why that was and how they all knew each other and um you know so all the actors had all that worked out i mean none of that's in the film but they all know do you know what i mean so when they're doing those improvisations they've got a very clear idea of the relationships between each other and and you know why 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 they would be there and all that stuff so the actors came down to brighton to shoot it and uh they came down a bit early, you know the night before and so um, rather than do any sort of rehearsal as they rehearsed the scene because it was such a sort of short dialogue scene i said to them let's not you know run the scenes what we'll do is we'll actually work on the talk about the characters and kind of their backstories and it was really important to kind of get the reasons like they understood you know what was going on in the scene in terms of why this this uh, guy was being brought back to this house uh which was the brother's house of the kid and who you know who was bringing him back and what was the reason for that and blah 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 you know what i mean so none of that is in the film you mm. don't ever hear why but all the actors as their characters understood all that so when you see the scene kind of playing out you know they, they're very sort of on, on point with that you know they they, they they all really understand the relationships between each other and, and how they've got there um yeah okay and, and, okay and that was really really important so you know i just sort of we'd spent a lot quite a bit a couple of hours really just talking about the characters they were all from northern ireland so they already sort of had that kind of aspect to, the, to them you know i didn't really have to work on accents and characters because i mm. kind of cast them anyway based on their auditions what they did in that they, i just said to them look you know what you did in the auditions that's kind of the way i want you to go with it so you, what we really need to do is just establish all the kind of facts and, and stuff and that's what we did yeah of course so did you like was it like a because obviously um yeah it's quite a small cast did you have like how much crew did you have on the short film was it like a big crew smallish crew uh, i wanted to keep i mean i like to keep, for the film like that you know it's good to keep the crew pretty small because you don't want to sort of like get too many people in the way so we had a dop um like a lighting a camera assistant um and then you know couple of like a first ad we had a we had a kind of um i think possibly a costume person i can't remember um but, but yeah it wasn't a focus puller we had a focus puller yeah i mean in actual fact if i did it again i think i'd have less because it got a bit too mm. much with that the producer okay. was quite into sort of making it but yeah I, I i i i'm not a big fan of um i'm certainly in a film like that you know you, you want to sort of keep the crew down as much as possible because you don't want it sort of in, Posing. I mean, obviously, if you're making a much bigger film in terms of set and kind of effects and the, the look of, you know, the sort of the whole kind of feel of it, you're going to yeah. need a much bigger crew. So I think, you know, but a film like that, it's kind of, it's pretty small, you know, you, you don't need, yeah, and the kind of shots you're going to get, you know, you don't need a lot of people um, necessarily. Yeah, okay. And then, so obviously, you, you finished on shooting it and it's all, you know, you've got all the shots you wanted, everything's good. And then it goes into post-production. Like, how did it go about, like, getting it distributed? Because I did see it obviously went, it played at a lot of different film festivals and it um, even won an award as well. So how did it go about, like, distributing the film? Well, the first thing to say is I got a really good editor because the editor I got, I'd, I'd worked with him on a, so I did a TV series as an actor called his Harry on the Boat and he was an editor on that and I'd already seen him cut in that. I, I used to go in the edit rooms and watch, watch him work. And he, I knew he was like really good. He was just kind of starting out then, but he, he just had a really good kind of approach to editing. So I sort of asked him if he'd edit the film and he did, and he was amazing. I mean, he did an amazing job on it because yeah. he was the guy who kind of cut that scene in the room. And basically, you know, he had a ton of footage that he had to create a scene out of, you know? So we, we just shot that scene like probably 15 times. So he was kind of basically create it and, and of course because they're improvising as well it's like he hasn't got exactly the same lines on, on, on each take mm. um so he did a really brilliant job of sort of putting that together and i, I you know I, I i would if i ever did a feature i would use him but subsequent to doing that 
he's now like a top editor. I mean, he 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 edits like Game of Thrones and Doctor Who and like oh, wow. Bodyguard and all this stuff. Tim Porter, his name is. Um, so he's he's like amazing. I mean, he's in the states now, I think. Um, and he's yeah, he's a he's a really kind of top editor. But he did say to me, I, I will hold him to it. I remember when he when he <laughs> when we did that, and he went to me. If you ever make a feature, I'm, I'm going to be your editor because he didn't. I didn't pay him for it. You know, he did it kind of off the thing. So I was like, oh yeah, Tim, absolutely. So I can now go back to him if I ever do make a film and say, Tim, remember what you know you said. <laughs> I'm going to hold him to <laughs> yeah, because he'd be great. Um, but yeah, it did make me realise how important uh, as a filmmaker, you know, uh, getting a good editor is. It's, it's really key. It's one of the key things. Um, yeah, of course. I would say, I would say, you know, you want a good script, good, a good cast, a good DOP, director of photography, and a good, uh, a really good editor. If you get those things right, you're gonna, you're gonna make a good film. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then basically we just started submitting it for festivals and and all that, and that becomes a whole thing in itself. Awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really good film. I, it is on Vimeo. I will uh, put it in the oh, links thanks, as Jake. well. To, uh, yeah, yeah. No, say, I, it is quite violent, isn't it? I mean, it is pretty violent. It is violent, yeah. So if you're, if you're um, uh, trigger warning as well, for uh, it is quite graphic. But um, yeah, if you're okay with that, I definitely recommend going to watch the film. It is very good. Uh, well, I think we'll wrap it there. So um, thank you, Steve, for coming on to this week's episode. It's been an absolute pleasure hearing about your stories in the Thanks, industry. It's been, yeah. it's been a lot of fun. Uh, awesome. So thank you very much, guys, for listening to this week's episode. Make sure to follow us on all social medias and have a good day. <laughs>